ज्ञानतिमृंध से ज्ञानाजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मल तस्म श्रीगुरव नम वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुतपदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सग्रजात सह गणरघुनाथन्वित सजीव साध्वत सवधूत पिजनसहित चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपद सह गणलिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरे प्रिय नमो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायिने कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य गौरत्षे नम पंचतत्वात्मक भक्तस्वक भक्ता भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्ति श्रीकृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्माद्य से यतोन्वयादित चार्थ सुभिज स्वराट तेने ब्रह्म हृदय अदिकव मुयंतूरय तेजो वारी मृदा यथा विनिमय यसर्गो मृषा धामना स्वेन सदा निरस्तकुहक सत्यम परम धीमहि नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीरए स्वस्ति अस्तु विश्व कल प्रसीदता ध्यान तो भूता शिव मिथो धिया मन भद्रम भजता दधोक्षजे आवेशता नो मतिरप्य हेतुकी श्रीमद भगवत गीता प्रथम अध्याय श्रीमद भगवदगीता चैप्टर वन इन Sanatan dharma will get destroyed jati dharma will get destroyed and for indefinite period of time we will be living in hell meaning that we will be suffering that's why we should not perform any such activity and then he was surprised that how did we resolve to commit such a great sin and why we committed to do that out of greed for the pleasure of royalty just for an insignificant kingdom we are going to perform such a greatly sinful activity it also told earlier 
he told that even if I get the three worlds, I will not kill my kinsmen for that. So that's why now he speaks his final words. Verse 46 translation. It would be better for me if in the battle the sons of Dhritarashtra with weapons in their hands killed me unarmed and unresisting. So Arjun's mental situation has come to such an extent that he thinks that I am going to perform a great sin. I am going to kill my uh, brother's relatives. So the only atonement for this sin is that these people should kill me and I should not resist. So Arjun is such a great warrior, but now he wants that he is thinking that this thought of fighting with our own kinsmen has been a great sin and he wants to perform atonement for that. So it is said in dharma, uh, the rules of dharma, that if we perform some wrong act by mistake, we can perform atonement for that, so that we don't have to suffer the sinful reaction for that activity. So Arjun also thought that I engaged, I came here to fight with my own brothers, relatives, own kinsmen, so it will have a great sinful reaction. So, if I want to, if I want that I should not live for an indefinite period of time in hell, I should perform atonement by being killed without resisting. So, Arjun is thinking that in this way he will be able to protect dharma. So, Arjun should fight for protecting dharma. But Arjun is not fighting to protect dharma he is thinking he is just thinking about protecting his own family so when a person gets into illusion then he cannot think properly anyone who is affected by lamentation by delusion he cannot perform his own dharma and he will engage in wrong activity because to engage in dharma one has to understand what is dharma and when one is in a state of lamentation, in a state of illusion, his intelligence gets bewildered. And his intelligence cannot understand anything as it is. His, what he sees wrong as right. This is tamasic intelligence in which one does not understand anything as it is, rather he understands it as opposite. He understands dharma as adharma and adharma as dharma. <coughs> this is the illusion of the intelligence. There are many people now in our country who say that we have fallen down because of dharma. So. This is uh, very, this is, <coughs> dharma engages us in discipline. If our life is not disciplined, then we will simply have to suffer. And nowadays, our mind, the modern thinking, it is against discipline. It is called as freedom. But actually, it is simply whimsical behavior. And because of that, there are lot, there is a lot of chaos in the society, like this wokeism and all going on in the name of social justice. It is simply the cause of chaos. Their only purpose is to protest against everything, to conduct protests against everything. Whatever is the established law and order, just oppose that. So dharma gives a system so that society can function properly and people can live peacefully and happily. This is the primary purpose of our dharma. Kanad Rishi has explained dharma as dharma is that 
by which you get abhyudaya and nishreyas abhyudayas abhyudaya is uh, material progress and nishreyas is spiritual progress vyas dev also says this that from dharma you will get artha you will get kama why don't you follow dharma and now people's mentality is that because of dharma we have fallen down so give up dharma and destroy dharma any religious activity protest against that any religious person any saint make fun of him mock at him so when the intelligence gets bewildered like this because of rajas and tamas then a person starts thinking like this and arjun is currently in that state of mind because of family attachment he is not able to see things as it is it means that instead of the protecting dharma he simply wants to protect his family but his family members are irreligious so they themselves will destroy dharma now arjun is thinking that if i fight against them dharma will get destroyed so i should not fight against them so that's what he told that it's such a surprise we are here to kill our own kinsmen but if they die there will be chaos now also many people speak like this many great philosophers speak like this that uh, india uh, fell down because of the mahabharat war all the great warriors they were killed and then this country went on downhill but that is not the reality but when you want to prove something then you try to find out lot of logic in that like arjun is finding logic to support his point of view because you can use your intelligence or you can misuse your intelligence so that's why it is very important to have a guru acharya a teacher a guide in life who can show us the correct path but nowadays our mentality is such that we do not want any guidance from anybody we just take everything from internet because there whatever we like we take that what we don't like we reject it there is no such rule that whatever is being shown on internet you have to follow that so this is called whimsical behavior dharma gives discipline and today's society is working on whimsical behavior so mind has become very frivolous very whimsical what we call as freedom that is actually frivolousness so because of that in society there is lot of chaos and people are suffering nobody is peaceful everyone is suffering nobody can say that i am very happy so geeta teaches this to us in geeta bhagwan says that knowing me you will achieve peace the peace formula the mantra for peace has been given in geeta by bhagwan but nobody wants to listen to that people say that krishna is simply provoking arjun to fight the war no people are actually fighting geeta is teaching peace sanjay himself speaks but because our mentality is like arjun we consider we think that arjun is right those who think that arjun is right in the first chapter it can be understood that they are also of that mentality and when they hear bhagwan's replies they will consider bhagwan to be wrong so mostly people think like this that why is bhagwan provoking arjun that means we also suffer from the same disease that arjun is suffering whoever is like me we agree to his talk because our mentality matches so arjun jo hai wo to arjun moh mein hai is bewildered 
is in illusion and the result of his bewilderment is lamentation dejection because when a person is lamenting he cannot take proper decision so people generally consume some addictive substances but it doesn't have any substance actually then it has dangerous results the person gets addicted to that whatever little intelligence or vivek the power of discrimination he has to take proper decision that power also gets destroyed then the person just thinks in one way only and he talks accordingly so gita teaches us bhagwan teaches us how to be away from this lamentation this is the first statement of bhagwan that arjun you are lamenting and you think yourself as a pandit very intelligent person and at the end also bhagwan says do not lament do not grieve every person experiences this lamentation in his life so the medicine for that disease is in gita everyone's life is same same story you will not find any person in this world who is free of lamentation this is a this virus is far dangerous than covid many people escaped covid covid did not touch those people but this virus of lamentation touches everybody and it keeps transferring from one person to another nobody has ever given a vaccine for this so the vaccine for this disease of lamentation and bewilderment is bhagavad gita until and unless we free ourselves from this disease we will never be happy no matter how much we say that we are free we are independent but actually our mind is constantly troubling us the real disease in is in us only not in others so this is arjuna's problem also he is not seeing his own mental problem he is just giving all this logic now see what arjun is speaking he is telling that that will be my welfare earlier he was talking of the welfare of society now he has come to speaking of his own welfare this is a selfish person earlier he was appearing as very generous but now we see that he is actually selfish now his inner feeling has come out that this will be beneficial for me he is not telling this that this will be better for all of us earlier he was speaking on behalf of everyone but now now he is talking about himself so actually people are like this only their only feeling internally is for themselves so that's why arjun says that i will not even uh, lift the shastra the weapons he is thinking that if i do, do not fight maybe they will also stop fighting they also won't fight like if you are fighting against somebody and you say that i will not fight maybe the other opponent will also decide not to fight but here arjun is telling that even if they continue to fight let them kill me i will not fight so there is a siddhanta that if many people's welfare is involved in something even if one person has to suffer somewhat it is all right like we see in the story of bakasur when the pandavas escaped from lakshagra and they went to a village then there bakasur was living and every day he was killing somebody so the villagers decided that we will send one person to you every day
ग्रामम जनपदस्य अर्थ है आत्मा अर्थ है कृत्रिम तेजस so this verse is in mahabharat which says that by sacrificing one person if entire family can be saved then it is better to save the family by sacrificing one person if by sacrificing one family the whole village can be saved then save the village by sacrificing that one family and if by sacrificing one village if you can save the entire district the entire janapad or county save that place but if for saving yourself if it is about saving yourself be ready to give up the whole earth because if you yourself don't survive then what is the point so arjun is also applying this bhuy anugraha nyay he is thinking that even if i die these people will be saved so i will sacrifice myself so with that it will have my welfare also and others welfare also so why my welfare there will be atonement because i had decided to kill them so i have to atone for that sin and these people so welfare is involved because uh, they will be saved so arjun is only thinking that uh, if i do not fight maybe the other people will also not fight is thinking like this but this is not going to happen draupadi had told earlier only maybe she had foreseen this she had understood kripanau sandhi kamuko ke bhim arjun she had told initially only that oh krishna if bhim and arjun do not fight if they decide not to fight because these two are the main warriors in all the great acts from the side of pandavas these two were involved bhim and arjun like bhim killed bakasur and arjun went to even swarga he went when went to heaven to fight so these two were very brave bhim and arjun so draupadi told that if the, these two decide to fight then remember that i have five sons and i have my old father also who is very brave subhadra ka putra abhimanyu and my and subhadra son abhimanyu is also there they will fight even if these two decide this arjun and bhim decide not to fight still the war must happen but what happens is that when a person is bewildered is into lamentation he can't think properly his intelligence becomes restricted that's why arjun is speaking like this so in the midst of all this bhagwan remained quiet aur arjun bolte bolte bahut bhavuk ho gaya and arjun became extremely emotional having by speaking all this as he continued speaking he was becoming more and more emotional and he became so emotional that uh, he just went and sat in the chariot quietly so verse 47 translation sanjay said having spoken thus on the battlefield arjun whose mind was distressed by grief cast away his bow and arrows and sat down into the rear of his chariot so now arjun sat quietly this is called dejection depression so in this state of mind the person the person simply sits this is the literal meaning of vishad comes from shit dhatu that means to sit that means in this state of mind the person loses his enthusiasm and he doesn't want to do anything so arjun spoke so much that he lost all his enthusiasm and in that battlefield earlier it was told about arjun arjun jo bhagavad gita mein aarambh hua tha arjun ka varnan to yahi se hua tha na atma vishti tan drishta initially it was told about arjun pravritte shastra sampate dhanurudam me pandava 
so when arjun saw the army he lifted up his bow that was told initially about arjun and he was ready to release his arrow but then only he told bhagwan to place the chariot in the midst of the two armies and he said i want to see who all are here to fight against me so he told this with great excitement and enthusiasm i want to see who all have come to fight against me so he had tremendous enthusiasm that time but now the condition is that he is has given up his bow and arrows that he has given up that gandiva bow which he never gave up arjun was always known as gandiva dhari the wielder of the gandiva bow but now he gave it up and his mind was distressed by grief but now actually whatever he said about dharma if this was the reality then why should he have lamented one who understands the tatva of dharma and one who is lecturing on dharma he should not lament he should not feel dejected so this is the apparent contradiction in gita that people do not understand if or they think arjun is right but if arjun is right why is he feeling distressed why is he lamenting if the person who is right why will he lament if what arjun was telling was right uh, then why should he have uh, lamented why he would have feel, felt distressed why would he have cried he should have been happy that i was going to do something wrong so if you are going to do something wrong and you don't know and suddenly you understand that uh, what i was going to do was highly wrong suppose you are going to invest huge amount of money somewhere and later you realize that the company is going to become bankrupt then you should feel happy that you have been saved so arjun should have felt happy that he realized that he was going to do sinful activity so if he arjun is actually correct he should have preached to his brothers also let's go back to the forest anyway we lived there for 12 years living on roots and fruits and we have the akshay patra also anyway we will not die out of hunger so why do we have to worry let's go so what we understand is that what arjun is speaking it is not touching actually his heart he is bewildered when a person is bewildered his enthusiasm gets destroyed when you are determined to do something you become enthusiastic whenever when people do something wrong they do it with lot of enthusiasm they don't have any doubt regarding their action but once one whose mind is filled with doubt then he is bewildered and he doesn't understand that i should do this or do that and that is the situation of arjun and he will tell that also later that i am not able to understand i i am not able to understand only what is correct they should their winning is correct uh, their victory is right or our victory will be right i have become bewildered regarding the rules of dharma so samudha means that i am bewildered regarding dharma first he has given such a big lecture on dharma and then later he says that i am bewildered nowadays there are big religious preachers acharyas gurus but if you talk something deeply about some deeply with some about some dharmic subject matter with them then they are bewildered so that is why this is very important to understand our situation is same like that of arjun in this world everyone's situation is same that's why gita is extremely important and gita teaches us that 
how we can live our life peacefully happily so now that arjun has given up his bows and arrows we just cannot give it up bhagwan has given us hands so what does that mean that we have to be always active we should be resolved to achieve our goal so with this we complete the first chapter of bhagavad gita so this chapter is entitled arjun vishad yog and the entire bhagavad gita is yog shastra every in every chapter's name there is the word yog so gita is the essence of upanishads it is brahma vidya now we begin the second chapter so in the second chapter sanjay speaks firstly although everything was being narrated by sanjay only whatever we studied in first chapter but in but the second chapter again begins with sanjay uvacha so what was the need for that so that nobody gets confused that who is actually the speaker so just for the sake of clarity sanjay uvacha is mentioned here so translation sanjay said madhusudan spoke the following words to arjun who was despairing being thus overcome by pity with eyes full of tears and grief so this is very important what sanjay is uh, speaking first of all is also an intelligent person his name is uh, sanjay and he is uh, speaking this to dhritarashtra so when he is speaking this in dhritarashtra's mind he must have felt very happy that uh, arjun is not ready to fight because arjun is the great warrior from the side of pandavas so dhritarashtra how much happy he must have felt if one team has a match with the other team and the other team the star player says that i do not want to fight he may be on the uh, match but he wants to make the other party win the other party will feel how much how happy so sanjay is telling dhritarashtra that don't be so happy because madhusudan is also sitting there and he will set everything in order so that's why sanjay is telling this otherwise what was the need for telling this so earlier also it was said kripaya paraya vishtam so what is this kripa this kripa is actually not mercy well like what we have family attachment that only appears as this kripa and that is only limited to one's own people that is not actually kripa it is just another form of attachment because of this arjun is crying so while bestowing mercy does one cry if you are compassionate and merciful on somebody will you cry and arjun he is such a brave warrior and he is crying it is said about arjun it is said about arjun that arjun had two vows that i will never never run away from the battlefield i'll not accept defeat now here arjun is showing dainyata being a brave warrior if you see that person crying you will feel surprised like we say that to any person that you have grown up and you are crying so uh, women have so are soft hearted men are generally hard hearted and arjun is such a brave warrior 
and his eyes are so much full of tears he is not able to see properly and he is not even able to stand he was sitting so he is feeling dejected so here there are three main points one is kripaya and other is the ashrupurna and third is the vishad so arjun is full of uh, tears is feeling uh, compassionate out of attachment and is dejected so on his mind what was the effect he was filled with attachment for his uh, family members and on his body what was the effect his eyes were full of tears what bhagwan must have been thinking regarding arjun that's why bhagwan will reply in the upcoming verses smilingly and the third is vishad so arjun arjun's speech there was vishad there was dejection so bhagwan madhusudan he replied like this to arjun what we will hear in the upcoming verse so why is he called madhusudan because uh, there was a demon named madhu like we have heard madhu kaitab bhagwan is called madhu kaitab hari sometimes he is also addressed as madhwari sudan sudan means one who takes out the oil sudhatu just to squeeze something and take the juice out of it so madhu is also taken out by compressing extracting like the bee hive it is compressed and the honey is taken out of it so that's why here bhagwan is called madhu sudan now that demon's name is madhu that is honey sweet as honey but his activities are like that of asur he had caught hold of lord brahma so they were born from the ears of mahavishnu so here madhusudan means that arjun ke andar aasakti hai ye bhi this attachment in arjun that attachment is very sweet family affection is very sweet sweet talk sweet words so this attachment appears very sweet because whatever happiness we derive in this world we like that only because of our attachment whichever person in whom we have attachment that person appears very sweet to us that's why we call them as honey boyfriend girlfriend they address each other as honey so in sanskrit it is called madhu it is very sweet actually the sweetness is not in that person the sweetness is in one's own attachment when the attachment is destroyed then one does not see any sweetness in the other person the more the attachment the more the sweetness that appears so at the level of attachment keeps going up and down sometimes that person appears as sweet more sweet sometimes when the other person is angry then he appears very bitter very hard hearted <laughs> so this uh, honey the sweetness it is simply illusion and arjun has that same sweet feeling towards his family members and bhagwan will cure that disease of his bewilderment this is the real asura the demon there is no demon outside bhagwan told in gita that there are two types of uh, prakriti divine and demoniac both are inside us we have some divine qualities inside we have some demoniac qualities inside so bhagwan will destroy those demoniac demoniac qualities so this nature that arjun is showing it is not actually divine it is appearing as divine so what appears very sweet from outside generally for very bitter comes out very bitter from inside so actually this is bitter 
that's why arjun is feeling dejected from within so that's why bhagwan is called here as madhusudana so here it would have been sufficient to say ovacha madhusudana that madhusudana spoke to the dejected arjun so why is the word vakya being added here vakyam ovacha because in our shastra when any word is used that word has some purpose there is no word is used without any purpose this is the uh, very fundamental rule of shastra that's why those who understand the meaning of shastra they observe each and every word and deliberate that uh, why what was the purpose of that word so here the word vakya was actually not required why it has been used like it was uh, told earlier also regarding duryodhan that duryodhan spoke like this so that time also it was said raja vachanam abravit so they said it was said that the king spoke the following words so why was the word vachan used uh, here vakya why is that word vakya is being used that means that something very important is going to be spoken by bhagwan that's why the word vakya is being added to lay stress on bhagwan's reply and we should hear that carefully this is the feeling the bhav behind that so till now bhagwan was simply hearing what arjun spoke bhagwan did not speak anything in the first chapter arjun just continued speaking when there is a discussion one person speaks and the other person then also gives some advice like if you are in some difficulty and you express your difficulty bhagwan just did not reply anything he was simply hearing so what is the secret behind that what happens is that when a person has some wrong feeling or wrong thinking or wrong understanding if that person continues speaking then you keep hearing him here keep hearing and just make that person empty of his understanding then that person will realize that are i am wrong now if you stop that person in the middle and start start giving your logic then the other person in order to support himself he will start giving more more logic then that wrong understanding will get embedded in that person then he will support his wrong understanding with more logic <laughs> so let that person keep speaking then probably after some time that person will start thinking that am i wrong then he will lose the steam but if you don't hear that person completely then he will continue speaking so the person keeps speaking so this is a very important art art of listening which now people do not have for that you need some patience also and some com- now people do not have this art of listening a person says something and immediate we have to react so bhagwan heard with so much patience he knew that whatever arjun is speaking is all nonsense bhagwan is a bhagwan who oh, nobody is so intelligent like him and you give a lecture in front of him and he is listening patiently so this is not some uh, uh, small matter how much kripa bhagwan has a person who has two or four verses who does two four verses of gita and he goes to a big pandit of bhagavad gita and he keeps speaking like chaitanya mahaprabhu he continuously heard sarvabhaum bhattacharya for 7 days only bhagwan can do like this ordinary person he will start becoming restless that the other person he is continuously speaking nonsense why nonsense why should i hear this this is wrong chaitanya mahaprabhu continuously heard the story of by sarvabhaum bhattacharya for 7 days 
and Sarvam Bhattacharya, Bhagavan did not allow him to even feel that whatever you are speaking is all nonsense. He kept hearing in such a way as if he was deriving lot of rasa from Sarvam Bhattacharya's talk. After seven days, Sarvam Bhattacharya wondered that you are continuously hearing, you are not telling anything. So Bhagavan thought that why should I speak? If I speak something, there will be problem. If I speak something, you will tell that you speak a lot. So many times not speaking is the best. Not speaking, remaining silent itself is speaking. So it was great that Bhagavan did not speak. And now Arjun got this doubt. Why is he not speaking anything? I told so much. He did not tell anything. That means something is wrong in me. So this is a great quality that Bhagavan has. He has so much patience that Bhagavan goes to the level of the person and deals accordingly with that person. Otherwise, Bhagavan is all knowledgeable and he is just hearing Arjun silently. How much patience he has, how much compassionate he is. A very compassionate person only can deal like this. So he heard everything quietly. but And now he replied. But he did not reply directly. Immediately he did not attack Arjun that what you spoke was wrong. First of all, he asked Arjun. So this strategy is make that other person only speak everything. Like now people preach, they just bombard everything, their own ideas on the other person. If you want to preach some to somebody, then first generate the inquisitiveness in the other person. If you do not generate the inquisitiveness, that person will not hear. When one is not inquisitive and you keep on speaking, he will become bored. That why is he speaking, he is preaching so much to me. So this is a great art that Bhagavan has. But So he wants to instruct Arjun, but he first wants to prepare Arjun in such a way that Arjun should ask me. So Arjun did not say Arjun, say anything to Arjun. He just asked Arjun that what has happened to you? You are such a great warrior. Why are you talking like this? So he speaks in the second verse. Translation of the second verse. Shri Bhagavan said, O Arjun, how has this impurity or dejection befallen you at such a critical moment? It is unbefitting a person of nobility, unconducive to the attainment of heaven and it leads to social disgrace. <laughs> so Bhagavan started with this question that from where the, all this has come? Bhagavan showed his surprise. Bhagavan did not did not say that I do not agree with you. He simply expressed surprise. Kutah means a question also and it also means surprise. Kutah means from where it came and also means why it came. And that also came in such a wrong time, in such a difficult, critical situation. If you would have to talk about all this sneha, attachment, affection, you would have told in some other, told me in some other place. This uh, battlefield is not the right place for discussing all this. So that's why Bhagwan is asking like this. So everything has to be spoken in its proper place, proper time, proper situation. There is a separate place for eating, separate place for talking, separate place for sleeping, separate place for having loving dealings. So different things are done at different places. Like in, especially in this uh, North India, if some person dies, then his dead body where it is taken, People say Ram Nam Satya hai. Ram's name is truth. So there is nothing wrong in saying that Rama's name is truth. Rest. Rest everything is temporary. Now if somebody's marriage is going on and there you say that Rama's name is truth. Ram Nam Satya hai. But 
during marriage it is not spoken like this although there is nothing wrong in the statement because this statement that rama's name is truth it has become a tradition or a custom that it, this statement is uttered only when a corpse is being carried so that's why bhagwan is telling like this that why are you telling all this here you could have told all this before we came to this battlefield you go to the battlefield and then you say i want to hear the news what happened yesterday in the parliament so this is not something to be told in the battlefield so if you go to the office and keep checking your email the boss will reply yeah, you have come here to work or to simply check your emails so if arjun says that my objective is to achieve moksha uh, not get into all these uh, royal pleasures that's why i am speaking all this so that's why bhagwan replies anarya jushtam that arya who is arya arya is one whose objective is to attain moksha liberation so in the culture of aryas moksha or liberation is the final purushartha and who is anarya non arya who is only stuck in uh, artha and kama so uh, bhagwan is telling that what you are speaking this is not befitting an arya so this will not give liberation to you so arjun may say that no problem at least i will get swarga i will get heaven because earlier he had told in 44th verse that if we kill them we will go to hell if we don't kill them we will go to heaven so bhagwan is telling that no if you do not fight this war there is no question of your achieving swarga so in the upcoming verse bhagwan says that uh, kshatriyas are very happy when they get chance for war because if they we uh, die they go to heaven if they win they enjoy the kingdom so how can you say that by not fighting you will go to swarga so then arjun can say that okay at least even if i do not achieve swarga at least i will achieve name and fame in this world that people will praise me that i gave up fighting against my guru against my elders so bhagwan is telling no you will achieve infamy in the society you will be disgraced in the society people will insult you these big big warriors they will think that you ran out of fear they will not say that uh, arjun went out uh, ran away out of compassion because nothing ever happened like this earlier it is not in arjuna's nature to run away he never ran away that's why in upcoming verse gita in gita bhagwan says that you are telling that you will not fight if you think that you will not fight you are telling nonsense all lies because your nature will force you to fight but knows what is the nature of arjun he knows arjun is such a great warrior arjun one of the names of arjun is vijaya meaning victory so nobody will think about you that out of compassion you ran away they will only say that you saw bhishma dron durya dushasan duryodhan you became afraid and then you ran away and those people who have so much respect for you as a great warrior they will make fun of you so what you are doing will simply bring disgrace to you he is simply telling to arjun that what are you doing he doesn't give some lecture to arjun so here he is telling this to arjun arjun means one whose heart is pure one who is of pure nature that's why he can hear he can understand although he has attachment but still he also has that qualification eligibility to receive the knowledge nowadays people mostly do not want to uh, accept any instruction any good instruction they have lot of ahankar they do not accept good instruction so this is a very great quality of arjun that in such a 
critical moment in such a state of mind also he accepted the instruction by bhagwan so bhagwan is telling that in such a critical moment what has happened to you so in such a critical moment also arjun accepts the instruction of bhagwan because this bhagavad gita was not spoken in some classroom it was spoken in the midst of the battlefield between the two armies and in that critical situation asking questions to bhagwan so it shows that arjun was so dedicated to receiving knowledge this is the qualification of a good disciple the symptom of a good disciple is that wherever he is receiving good instruction good knowledge he will accept that he won't say that oh this person is so small he is so inferior to me why should i accept what he is telling no a really intelligent person is one who is ready to accept good instruction from anywhere so that's why bhagwan says that uh, whatever you are telling actually it is not like that and from where this impurity has come it shows that actually it is not in your nature because if it has come from outside that means it is not in your nature since it has come from outside it can be discarded it can be discarded away also if it would have been in your nature then it would have been very difficult to uproot it but because it has come from outside it is temporary it is incidental so in, in such a situation having seen this relatives it has come to you it was not earlier in you when you saw the your relatives then it has come in, in you so it can be discarded away so after this bhagwan will speak one more verse which we will study in the next class if you have any question you can ask मैम श्री कोई है प्रश्न उत्कर्ष जी पूछते हैं क्वेश्चन इन द एंटायर फर्स्ट चैप्टर अर्जुन की कई बातें ऐसी कहते हैं इन द फर्स्ट चैप्टर अर्जुन स्पीक्स मेनी थिंग्स व्हाट ही थिंक्स इज करेक्ट सो मेनी टाइम्स वी आर थिंकिंग अबाउट समथिंग और वी कंटेम्पलेट ऑन दैट ड्यूरिंग दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ थिंकिंग और कंटेम्पलेटिंग वी mostly follow our instincts or uh, the voice from within so how can we understand that we are thinking in the right or wrong direction so the answer you will understand only when you have knowledge of shastra from that you will get vivek the power of discrimination shastra gives us the power of discrimination that's why it is very important to study shastra like this uh, situation what we are seeing in geeta this plot of geeta has been prepared for this purpose only so that we can take instructions from others so many stories in mahabharat in puranas why are they given because we also face such situations in our lives if we would have studied these shastras properly then when we face such situations we will be able to take decision properly तो दैट इज द सोल्यूशन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन यू सेड दैट वी बिहेव विमसिकली वेन वी टेक लेसन फ्रॉम द इंटरनेट एंड आई एग्री माई ओन एक्सपीरियंस हैज बीन दैट आई अप्रोच ए साधु फॉर दीक्षा दो द दीक्षा हैज नॉट हैपेंड येट इन द मीन टाइम आई फील दैट आई हैव बीन लेफ्ट टू रीड एंड फिगर थिंग्स आउट and i am getting little to no guidance or communication this seems like a common experience among many who live away from their prospective guru what advice would you give to someone in this position so sudhav yahi hai so the answer the advice is that don't be away from guru be near to guru because if you want education shiksha you want to learn then you have to be near even if not physically at least mentally you have to be near the guru if physically if it is not possible for you but today in the age of internet through emails keep in contact with the guru 
get your doubts cleared from the guru if you do not get your doubts cleared from the guru so like here we discuss that we have this inner voice in our conscience it is not necessary that that inner voice will always be correct one who has good samskaras who samskaras are from shastra his inner voice will be correct but if we only have social samskaras then our inner voice will be according to social thinking only like people say that bhagwan deviated arjun or what so parmatma does not instruct us so easily so whoever is your respective guru keep in contact with the guru and uh, uh, send your doubts to him get your doubts cleared guru is meant for that only so then your path will be clear any other question धन्यवाद प्रणाम आर जी एक प्रश्न है जैसे आपने कहा सो अनदर क्वेश्चन लाइक यू सेड दैट सर्वम भट्टाचार्य टोल्ड महाप्रभु दैट आर यू हियरिंग आर यू एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड एनीथिंग और नो सो देयर आर सम डिसाइपल्स हु प्रेजेंट लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चंस और डाउट्स टू गुरु बट सम डिसाइपल्स सिंपली एग्री टू व्हाटएवर गुरु सेज तो दोस disciples oh, who are not asking questions from guru are they un- understanding everything or they don't understand every anything so answer the disciple must be inquisitive if the disciple is not inquisitive what does what is the meaning of being disciple so disciple means one who accepts so sikh means one who agrees to accept shiksha so one has to be inquisitive but whatever topic is being taught by the guru we should understand try to understand that if you are understanding that there is no need to ask question it's not a rule that you just have to ask for the sake of asking some people ask simply because they have to ask something they ask for the sake of asking not like that so if you have understood the topic no need to ask if you have not understood you ask some people's intelligence is very sharp they understand very quickly they don't have the need for asking much questions some people do not are not uh, so intelligent so they do not ask some people are of shy nature so they do not ask some people are in the illusion that they have already understood so they, they should also discuss with their uh, Uh, fellow disciples their god brothers or god sisters so by discussing they can also understand how much i understood or did not understand so next question does shoka and moha happen simultaneously or does it follow one after the other so what is your experience this is answer this is actually a matter of experience shoka comes from moha only otherwise why will lamentation or shoka happen one who is not in moha not into illusion one who is not bewildered he will not lament so lamentation comes after illusion so uh, a person we see that person is lecturing also and is lamenting also how can both happen at the same time so that means something is wrong somewhere apne us smile ke bare mein bataya na arjun kis tarike se so next question kar krishna smile kar rahe arjun ke bare mein hum ye bhi samajh sakte hai ki uh and next question you said that bhagwan smiled when he started replying to arjun इसके लिए हंस रहे या भागवतम विष्णु चक्र का कोई काम कमेंट इसमें कुछ जगह पे मैंने देखा है कृष्ण को भी पता नहीं चलता है ये ये लीला योग माया रच रच रचती है तो हम कृष्ण समझता है ओके योग माया कुछ प्लान कर रहे लेट मी एक्ट इन दैट वे ये ये दोनों भी इट सम योग माया एक्टिंग व्हाई इज भगवान स्माइलिंग कृष्ण को तब पता चला 
या तो कृष्ण ने जादू किया वो सम, वो काम आने लगा तो तब स्माइल है ये दोनों कर तो पहले आपको ये निर्णय करना होगा कि वो जादू योग माया का है कृष्ण का है सो फर्स्ट ऑफ आंसर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू डिसाइड इट इज कृष्ण मैजिक और योग मायाज मैजिक स्माइल करेंगे तो तो क्या हेलो पूछो हाँ जी बताइए हेलो हेलो कौन पूछ रहा है बोलिए ए वन टू थ्री बोलो राधे राधे महाराज राधे राधे महाराज जी हाँ जी राधे महाराज जी आपका ये बहुत ही अच्छा लगता है सेशन सुनने में बहुत ही ज्ञान मिलता है बहुत ही अच्छा लगता है नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आई एम आई फील वेरी हैप्पी हियरिंग योर क्लासेस देयर इज लॉट टू लर्न फ्रॉम योर क्लासेस और ज्यादा ज्ञान माय रिक्वेस्ट इज व्हाई डोंट यू टेक दिस गीता क्लास मोर देन वंस इन अ वीक सो आंसर एक्चुअली आई टेक क्लास डेली बट आई हैव अदर सब्जेक्ट्स आल्सो नहीं वो इतना समय नहीं है ना मैं बाकी दूसरे दिन भी पढ़ाता हूं सो आई डोंट गेट सो मच टाइम आई डेली टीच टू सब्जेक्ट्स सो नाउ क्लास पे आए थे जी कहा कि हिंदी में तो आप पढ़ाते नहीं है सो दिस एक्चुअली स्टार्टेड बिकॉज़ वन जेंटलमैन टोल्ड मी दैट यू नेवर टीच इन हिंदी सो आई डिसाइडेड दैट ओके आई विल टीच इन हिंदी आल्सो वंस अ वीक सो आई के लिए धन्यवाद अगर आगे आगे भविष्य में आपका बहुत बहुत अच्छा लगता है सर बहुत अच्छा लगता है महाराज जी धन्यवाद धन्यवाद महाराज जी आराध्य जी पूछती हैं हम so छोटे क्वेश्चन दैट वी स्मॉल चिल्ड्रन हाउ कैन वी स्टडी शास्त्र एंड हाउ कैन वी बिकम ग्रेट डिवोटीज ऑफ भगवान अपने बड़े पिताजी से कहें कि हमको शास्त्र सो द आंसर The small children, they should tell their parents that you teach me shastra. Then you become big devotees. So go behind your parents and tell them continuously that you teach me Gita, Bhagavat, etc. Because then the father also has to learn. Otherwise, father will simply sit and watch cricket match. ठीक है और किसी का कुछ पूछना चलो फिर प्रार्थना श्लोक पढ़ते हैं सो विल रिसाइड द प्रेयर वर्सेस सर्वोपनिषदो गावो दोग्धा गोपाल नंदन पार्थो वत्स सुधीर भोक्ता दुग्ध गीतामृत महत एक शास्त्र दैवकी पुत्र गीत एक देवकी पुत्र एक मंत्रस्त कर्माप्येक सेवा कार्पण्यदोषोपहत स्वभा पृछा ताम धर्म सम्मूचेता यश्रेय सश्चित ब्रूहि तन्मे शिष्यस्ते हम शिष्यस्ते हम ताम प्रपन्न योगेश्वर कृष्ण 
यत्र पार्थो धनुर्धर तत्र श्रीर्विजयो भूतिर ध्रुवा नीतिर्मतिर्म कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंदगोपकुमाराय गोविंदाय नमो नमः नमः पंकजनाभाय नमः पंकज मालिने नमः पंकज नेत्राय नमस्ते पंकजंग्रये भवे भवे यथा भक्ति पादयोस्तव जायते तथा कुरुष्व देवेश नाथ स्वम नो यत प्रभो नाम संकीर्तन यर्व पाप प्रणाशन प्रणामो दुख समनस्त नमा हरि परम हरि ओम तत्सत्